Well, hi there. Recently, there has been some controversy about the spider ball python. I watched several of the videos from different reptile YouTubers about this controversy, and I decided I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. It, no, that's not my thing, and, and this channel's never been one to chase after trends, but we do take your suggestions seriously, and a lot of you have been asking us to talk about the spider ball python. And actually, I've been wanting to talk about the spider ball python pretty much since this channel was new, because it is really, really interesting. And so I have succumbed to peer pressure, and here I am to talk to you guys today about the spider ball python. These two ball pythons with me are both spiders. They've uh, both got a little bit more going on with them than just spider, but they both have spider in them, and they're actually part of a clutch of ball pythons that I produced last year, and we actually filmed a whole video about that clutch. You can check that out right here, because it's, it's such a glorious clutch. And spider is actually a big part of what made that clutch so interesting. Spider, as you may be able to tell by looking at these, is a mutation that reduces the amount of pattern that a ball python has. Another pattern reducing mutation like spider is pinstripe and this ball python here actually has both spider and pinstripe whereas this one has just spider. So this gives you an idea what the spider mutation does to the pattern of a ball python. This is a Mojave spider and this is a Mojave spider and pinstripe often called a Mojave spinner. Anytime you get spider and pinstripe a lot of times they call that a spinner and so you can see that pattern is extremely, extremely narrow, extremely reduced. But even with just the spider, they say that it looks like a spider web, and so that's why it's called spider. Spider was actually one of the very first morphs that came into the reptile hobby, at least in the United States. And it is, like almost all the morphs, it, it is something that occurs in nature, rarely. But there are spider ball pythons, wandering around in Africa right now, and one of those, at least, was located and came into the hobby very early on. And so a lot of spiders have been produced over the years, and a lot of really amazing combos. Spider has, for a long time, been controversial. It's the controversy about spider is nothing new. And they are controversial not because of the pattern, though, I mean, there are some people that are opposed to keeping snakes at all. There are some people that are opposed to any sort of color morphs being bred because they're not natural, even though they are naturally occurring. You would never find one, though, with as many of these unusual morphs in them as these two snakes have wandering around in the wild, so it is a little unnatural. But spider is a special case because of something called wobble. So there are two big questions that I definitely want to address. First of all being what is wobble? And second, should we breed spider ball pythons given that they have this wobble? This term wobble refers to a neurological condition, meaning it affects the brains, in some way of spider ball pythons. It causes what I can only describe as sort of like wonkiness. These two have a very, very, very minor wobble. Uh, they all, all spider ball pythons seem to have some degree of wobble. These have about as little wobble as you'll ever see. Uh, sometimes, well with these, the main things I notice is every now and then they'll hold their head just a little off level. And, and the other thing that spiders do that I don't see other ball pythons doing is uh, when they come to the edge of the enclosure, they'll follow the, the, the wall which a lot of ball pythons will do that, but when they hit the ceiling, they'll go ahead and go upside down and follow that curve. I've never seen any other ball pythons do this. It does seem like they have uh, just a very different sort of balance, which talking about balance for a snake is odd, but it is like their balance is a little bit off. And the time that it shows itself the most is especially when they're about to feed. When they, when they feed, a lot of times they'll start to shake a little bit, and their accuracy with their strikes is definitely lower. And I've heard some people say that that's a problem for them because they, they miss on their strikes and then they hit the wall. I mean, my, my solution to this has always been to just not hold 
a rodent feeder close to the wall, so even if they miss, they don't hit the wall. But that, that is a concern, for sure. The worst thing that can happen with this wobble, in the most extreme cases, the snakes almost just sort of, like, spin around. And they don't do this all the time, but it seems like when they get sort of stimulated by food or, or something else, that they just start to just corkscrew. And uh, that is a real thing. It's not something that happens in all spider ball pythons. I would I would go as far as to say it's pretty uncommon that it is that extreme, but it is that extreme and I've seen that in person. The spider, this wobble, is definitely something that varies in intensity between individuals. And it can even vary over the lifetime of a given snake. As, as I understand it, and I've never seen this happen personally, but as I understand it, some snakes that didn't have a very severe wobble can just suddenly develop a very severe wobble. I, I've never seen this happen, but allegedly that is something to be concerned about. This wobble is either linked to the pattern mutation that you see in spider ball pythons, or it is due to something called pliotropy. And I want to explain the difference between these two things, because it's the cool stuff like this that actually made me want to talk to you about spider ball pythons. Linkage means that the gene that causes wobble and the gene that causes spider both occur on the same chromosome. And because of that, they're not inherited independently. If you get that chromosome, then you get both spider and wobble. That is a possibility. The fact that we have never ever seemed to find a spider that doesn't have wobble would mean that if they are linked, they're very, very close to one another on that chromosome. And the reason that I would know that they're located close to one another on the chromosome is because something called crossing over occurs where parts of a chromosome can be exchanged with the one that you got from the other parent. So they will swap sections of that chromosome, and so something that was linked can become unlinked. This is what happens with banana ball pythons, which is actually why you get the banana moving from the X chromosome to the Y chromosome, if you don't know what I'm talking about. We have a video right here all about the male maker and female maker banana ball pythons, which is so cool. As there is no evidence that they ever get separated from one another, what is more likely is that this is due to something called pliotropy, which means there is just one gene. It is a gene that codes for the spider pattern, but it also causes the wobble. It has multiple effects on the phenotype of these snakes, even though it's just one gene. And if I had to bet, that is what I would bet is going on with the spider ball python. The allele for spider is incomplete dominant. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we have a whole series of rockin' genetics videos that you should check out that will tell you all about incomplete dominance and actually everything we're gonna talk about here about genetics. Because in all these videos that I've been watching about spider ball pythons, honestly, I think the opinions that have been expressed have been great on, on both sides of the argument, but their description of genetics has been lousy. So, I'm glad you came here. Now, I said that the spider is incomplete dominant. What that means is that the way that it is expressed, if there is only one copy in the genotype, is different than the way that it is expressed if there are two copies. This is due to something called a dosage effect, which just means that the dosage of the protein product coded for by the spider allele matters. If you're making twice as much, then the effect is twice as strong. And it appears that having two copies of this allele is actually lethal. They, they die before they even hatch out of the eggs. People who breed spider ball pythons to other spider ball pythons often uh, recognize that they have more eggs fail to hatch, and when they cut those open, they find these white snakes inside that are dead. And so one copy of this spider allele, they can live with that. Two copies, it appears to kill them. And, and there are some people who deny this, who say, well, you don't know. But the strongest evidence that suggests that it is homozygosity, having two copies of this spider allele that causes death, is the fact that there are no known true breeding spider ball pythons, which means there are no spider ball pythons out there that produce only spider babies. 
And, and that would be the case for a homozygote. If it had two copies of the, the spider allele, then all the babies that they produced would have it, and we don't know of any spiders for which this is the case. If you have one, let us know, because that would be new evidence. Science has always opened new evidence, changing everything we thought was true, but as it stands right now, it looks very much like being homozygous for the spider allele, lethal. And because of that, if you breed two spiders together, on average, about one in four of the eggs should result in a homozygous spider that is unlikely, probably will never survive to hatch. That's definitely something to consider. I have never paired two spiders together because of this. So the next question, and this is the big moral question, is should we breed spiders? And the fact that I, I, I clearly do breed spiders should indicate to you a little bit what my personal opinion is, but I want to be very clear about something. My opinion is not better than your opinion about this. Whether or not we should breed spiders is a moral question. And science is actually incapable of answering moral questions. Science can inform us what the consequences might be of, say, breeding or not breeding spider ball pythons, but it is really up to us to decide are we okay with those consequences or are we not. Because I don't think my opinion is any better than your opinion, so long as you're informed on this issue, and if you're watching this video you're probably either very informed or you're trying to become very informed, I'm not going to try to persuade you one way or another. I, I think you're totally entitled to your opinion, and both sides can make a great case for whether or not we should breed spider ball pythons in the future. I personally have never produced a spider with a bad wobble, and, and I'm very careful with the spiders that I choose to breed, that I only use spiders with minimal amounts of wobble, and in my personal experience, which is limited, all the babies have had almost no wobble at all. I mean, these guys, their wobble is almost undetectable, but it's definitely there. Definitely there. It's always there. I did once win a spider ball python with a horrible wobble. Uh, there was a contest. If you could guess the weight right on this snake, he would be yours. And, um, I mean, I, I worked in a lab that measured all kinds of things in grams all day long. And... You know, I also keep ball pythons, and I just nailed that estimate, and so I won this this snake, and I, I'd never uh, seen him. I didn't know how bad his wobble was. His spider was still fairly new to me at the time, and I got him, and his wobble was one of those corkscrewing ones that I was talking to you about. It was really bad. I made the decision that I was not going to breed that snake. I didn't want to produce more snakes like that, and I actually wound up trading that snake for my sand boa sarlacc, who shows up in our sand boa video. So I, I'm really glad the way that worked out, and, and that ball python wound up with a great home, and to my knowledge, he's never been part of a breeding program, because my personal opinion is we should try to breed for minimal amounts of wobble if we're going to breed spider ball pythons at all. But that's just my opinion. And it's also part of why I don't really like live animal giveaways, because sometimes people end up with animals that they wouldn't really choose to have, and I don't think that's an ideal situation. Even though I said that I've never had a baby that I've produced have a bad wobble, I do recognize that the potential is there. And so if you're going to breed spider ball pythons, you need to recognize that producing one with a bad wobble is a real possibility, even if your spiders that you're using as breeders don't have a bad wobble, and you need to be prepared for what you're going to do if that outcome should happen. Of course, if you choose to breed anything, uh, one of the side effects of sexual reproduction is some of the babies are weird, and, and so no matter what you're breeding, there is the possibility that you're going to have bad outcomes, right? Some, some babies that are not going to make it or are just not going to have the best quality of life, that possibility is always there, but it's probably higher with spider ball pythons than most other things you would choose to breed. Honestly, as I referenced earlier, I mean, there are moral concerns associated with just keeping pets at all. And there are many other morphs that also have potential health concerns associated with their breeding. Wobble isn't even exclusive to the spider ball python. So, being aware of the possible 
unintended outcomes of breeding is something you always need to be aware of and you need to be prepared for. So if you're going to breed anything, be prepared. Keeping pets, quite frankly, is about learning and it's about human enjoyment. Personally, I don't think that most people will care very much about nature if they don't have some sort of first-hand encounters with wild things. Some animals are am ambassadors to humanity, and I think that is an important reason to keep some animals that are generally considered to be wild animals. But I will not tell you that my opinion on these things is the universal truth. Like I've said before, if you're well informed on this issue, um, if you know as much as I do, which honestly, after watching this video, you just might, your opinion is every bit as valid as mine. And I can always be swayed by facts and res respectful conversations. So if you have thoughts on spider ball pythons or any of the things that I've shared here, if you'd like to try to change my mind about these things, uh, you know, if you, if you think there are important details that I'm missing out on, please share them in the comments. Uh, I am, I'm wide open on this topic. I, I'm not a person who breeds in large numbers. Uh, I love these snakes. I love these snakes, but I could be persuaded that it's not a good idea going forward. There are many good arguments on both sides, and I'm just grateful that you've been here to hopefully understand a little bit more on this issue so that you can make an informed decision for yourself. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. And check out our Patreon! Thank you guys for all that you do for us. You know what? what? Like, uh... Michelle's gone. Will's gone. You are now doing what Michelle does. You're doing what Will does. You're doing what Jason does. I'm still just doing what I do. I am such a bum. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> As always, like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. Let me say that again. That was a little too enthusiastic. <laughs>